Hi. So today is March the 9th, um, 2021, and I thought I might continue with the read aloud. So here we go. Uh, the name of this book is the Tuskegee Airman story, and it writ it's written by Lynn M. Holman and Thomas Riley. Two authors, and it's illustrated by Rosalie M. Shepard. So I thought it was interesting because we've never read a, a text that had two authors. Um, this book has an airplane on it, and on the side of the airplane it says "Boss Lady," written in red. It's a text feature. I thought it was kind of cool. The Tuskegee Airman story. What are you kids doing? Grandma asked. We're just playing with this really neat stuff we found. What is all this? Oh, Joshua, Grandma answered. Those are all your granddad's war war two things. His uniform, his leather fighting helmet, um, his medals. He was a real hero, you know, a Tuskegee airman. Get him to tell you all about it. I can set my timer. Granddad, Grandma says you were in a war and that you are Tuskegee Airmen. What's a war? Joshua asked. And when was it? added Krista. What's a Tuskegee Airman and how did you get to be one? asked her friend Charlene. Well, kids, Granddad answered. Let's all sit down and I'll tell you all about it. Do you know how you and your sister sometimes um, fight with each other or how sometimes you get into arguments with um, with your friends? Well, a war is a great big disagreement between entire entirely two countries or whole groups of people. The war that I was. Let me go back. Do you know how you and your sister sometimes fight with each other or how you sometimes get into arguments with your friends? Question mark. Well, a war is a great big disagreement between in entire countries or whole groups of people. The war that I was ha the war that I was in happened a long time ago, even before your mom and dad were born. Granddad answered. Back when I was just 20 years old, America, England, and France were involved in a really bad dispute with Italy, Germany, and Japan. That fight lasted for several years, and it was called World War II. Every American, young and old, wanted our country to win the war and tried to help in all kinds of ways. Some young men and women joined the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, or the Marines. Others, like me, joined what's now the Air Force, but was called the Army. Air Corps back then, Granddad continued. You see the sign that says, I want you, U.S. enlist. What did you do in the Air Corps, Granddad? Krista asked. Were you a pilot? Did you fly a plane? Yes, honey, I did. Although for a long time, I didn't think I would be allowed. Even though I was already licensed as a civilian pilot, the men in charge of the, or the American military didn't believe that black people could do things like fly airplanes. Well, why not, Granddad? Well, Krista, that's how it was back then. African-Americans were only allowed to do really common types of jobs in the military. In fact, the United States was a segregated country. That meant that black people weren't allowed to go to certain places and do a lot of things that white people could do. We could have the same. We, we couldn't have the same jobs, drink out of the same water fountains or even eat at the same restaurants. His container says colored right there. And this restaurant says ah, whites right here. 
so they couldn't fit together. But you changed all that, right, Granddad? I mean, we can go anywhere and be anything we want to now, right? Joshua added with a smile. Well, it took a long time, Joshua, and a lot of people to make it happen. But you're right. The Tuskegee Airmen proved that African Americans could fly airplanes and do lots of others, other jobs really well. And that helped to change things. Everybody walking around everywhere now. Back in 1941, the Army Air Corps set up a special program at Tuskegee Air Field in Alabama to give African Americans a chance to fly in the military. Training was really hard. We had to learn about weather conditions, military procedures, how to read a map, well, that word map, all kinds of different things besides how to fly an airplane. A lot of guys who were good flyers were washed out or eliminated. Context clues. But some of us made it through and graduated. What about Grandma? Was she at Tuskegee? asked Joshua. She sure was. Women like Grandma wanted to do their part to help win the war. They worked in lots of jobs. At Tuskegee, there were nurses and parachute riggers. Some women worked in offices or as guards at the base. Several worked on the airplanes and in the flight tower at Moton Field, where we first learned to fly. Were all the Tuskegee Airmen pilots? Asked Charlene. No way, Charlene. Some of us were learning to be military fighter pilots. Other guys were being trained as mechanics or they were working in the offices. Some men loaded weapons. Others kept the trucks running or made sure we were fed. There were hundreds of different jobs and they were all important, Granddad continued. nice pictures as soon as there were enough of us to fill three more fighter squadrons we were sent to europe to join the first group of tuskegee airmen the 99th fighter squadron benjamin o davis jr was a commander was our commander our four squadrons were called the 332nd fighter groups but we were nicknamed the red tails because the tails on our airplanes were painted bright red Did you win a lot of battles? Asked Joshua. We did, son. Our biggest job was to protect the bomber planes from enemy fighters that were trying to attack them as they flew. We did a really good job of it, too. We flew more than 1,500 missions and destroyed lots of armed enemy airplanes, supplies, and equipment. I remember one time we escorted American bombers all the way to Berlin, Germany, a round trip flight of 1,600 miles. Our ground crews worked all night long to get the planes ready for our mission. They even had to install special fuel tanks so that we have enough gas to get there and back, back again. Everybody really worked together to make us successful. Did the Tuskegee Airmen fly bombers too? They did, Krista, but their training took longer than ours did. Before their African-American bomber crews had a chance to go overseas, the war had ended. They fought lots of battles, though, just as we did, against the rules that kept black people from doing things here in America. We were all Tuskegee Airmen. So is Grandma a Tuskegee Airman too? Asked Joshua. She sure is. Granddad responded. Everybody who took part in the program is a Tuskegee Airman. 
And is she a hero like you, granddad? Even though she didn't get any medals, Krista asked. Everybody who helped America to win the war was a hero, honey. Some people fought America's enemies in battle overseas. Others fought for our freedom at home. The Tuskegee Airmen proved that African Americans had the ability to be successful, not just as military pilots, but in all kinds of ways. They never gave up. They never stopped trying to be the best. That's what Grandma and I want you children to do. We will, promise the kids. And Granddad, we're really proud of you and Grandma and all the other Tuskegee Airmen. So if you had this book, I say, learn about the author. Okay, and that's on the back of the book and the illustrator. All right. I hope you liked it. I know Black History Month is over with, but I seen this book in the media center and I was like, oh, this is like a nice little book to read. Um, it's actually a true story. The Tuskegee Airmen. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.